Hi, this is Chris Newmarker. I'm Managing Editor of Medical Design and Outsourcing. We're a mass device resource. I'm here at MD&M West in Anaheim, California. This is one of the largest medical device manufacturing events in the world. We're going to check out some of the really neat technology to see here at MD&M West. Come on, let's go check it out. I'm here with Tony Kaufman of 3M Medical Materials and Technologies. So Tony, you're going to show 3M's uh, Find My Adhesive tool. Tell me more about it. Absolutely. FindMyAdhesive.com is a free online tool that we're helping design engineers really answer the questions it takes to, to find the right adhesive for their, their device. So what we've done is we've taken our 55 years of experience and condensed it into an online tool where we ask them a series of questions if they want to stick something to the skin, the duration at which time they need to stick to the skin. And then we start asking questions about the type of, of individual, the type of skin that they stick to, and through these series of questions, get them to an answer much quicker. Wow, that's, so what does this mean for somebody who's developing a, a medical device that needs to be stuck onto the skin? Yeah, it's really taking all the experience that we've had over these years and helping them get their product to market quicker. If we can help them get to the right product at the right time, it just saves time on design and development. It helps them with the experimentation to really answer those questions quickly and hopefully get a product to market much quicker. I mean, wearables are such a hot area in the medical device sector. So, I mean, I can see that this is kind of taking the adhesives out of the equation that they can quickly figure out a solution here and then, you know, worry about other, you know, things that they need to figure out with their innovations. Absolutely. I mean, it's complicated. Sticking something to the body is so difficult, okay? If we right. can help accelerate that, to help you focus on your, your sensor, your algorithm, whatever you need to make your product really unique in the marketplace. If it comes to adhesives, if it comes to materials, 3M has your answer. That's great. Well, thanks a lot. Thank you. So I'm here with Christian Polgard of OnRobot. And what we have here, it's the uh, BG10, Vacuum Gripper 10. Yes. And uh, tell me some more about it. Well, what's unique about this gripper uh, is that it's a vacuum gripper that generates the vacuum inside of the gripper. So you just need to add 24 volts and you generate this, the, the vacuum with the pump in, built into the gripper. So basically you just need to plug in one cable and you have a 10 kilo, that's why the 10 in the name, 10 kilo or 22 pound payload uh, power of lifting objects. And you were telling me this is I mean, this is much more energy efficient than uh, you know the competing robots that would be using, you know, su suction for this. Yeah, normally if you use a vacuum gripper or a, or a pneumatic gripper, you would run a, a line around the robot that that would be hooked in, into a pneumatic system. But since we're only using electricity here, we're saving a lot of the cost in in maintaining and and having a system installed like that. And every robot has. Uh, uh, electricity 24 volt available sure. and you can mount this gripper on any robot type or any ga gantry type um, cartesian if you want that yeah and um, and below there we have the uh, the gecko gripper we were just writing about just about a week or so ago and uh, and this was inspired by the way that geckos are able to you know grasp to yeah so developed um, at stanford NASA roots. Yes, we, yeah. we developed the, the material for NASA because they wanted to pull solar panels out on the ISS. Yeah. And we took that material that we developed for that project and turned it into this industrial gripper. So basically it works uh, like this. So you, you, you add force to your object and that force will create an adhesion, Van der Waals forces, and create the grip. So usually the question is how do you release your object once you've gripped right. it? And we have a motor inside of the gripper that pulls the pads into the gripper and the frame will tear off the product. Wow, that's, that's very cool. I mean, so why would a, a medical device manufacturer want to be interested in this? Well, I mean, any material handling a pr a procedure could be porous objects. It could be uh, also return of investment time, lower for this than the normal pneumatic uh, systems. But porous objects in general is something that vacuum or pneumatics can't handle. And this is, this is typically materials that would be handled in medical industry uh, with a gripper like this. Exactly. Well, great. Well, thank you very much. You're welcome. Hi. So we're with Keith Kirsten at Omron. And uh, 
Amran at the show is showing off the uh, the factory harmony experience, and this is really about you know the future of manufacturing, incorporating in you know AI and all kinds of other processes. So, you know, tell me more about what you're doing. Yeah, I'd love to. First of all, thanks for stopping by. So, what we're showing here is, like you said, it's our factory harmony experience, and essentially what we're trying to do is we're trying to show how the factory of the future can work to make products and technology that can help to make life better, if you will. So if we look at things like traceability, so making products safer and also to make them more effectively is the ability to mark products, to be able to track products as they go through manufacturing processes, then we can ensure that we have the quality and then also make sure that everything that makes it out to the customer is, is, uh, is good to go and of high quality. So what are some of the things that you're, uh, that you're showing off here? So one of the things that we're showing off is our is our new laser marker, and that's a big part of that traceability that we talk about. So the ability to mark different types of parts and mark them in a way that's permanent and that's not going to come off. And we also have our reading technology. So we have a whole new set of readers that are able to read those marks as things go through manufacturing processes. And then, of course, you have the data connectivity side, so the ability to take all that data and then feed it up into your system so that you can store that for your records and also use it for process improvement. And do some analytics. And, exactly. You know, those markings, I know, um, UDIs are a huge deal in the device industry. This could help them out with it. Exactly. That's what this is centered around, to help people to accomplish that. And then also not just do it because they have to, but do it because it can help their processes and also to help the, the product quality in general. You know, it's not just the FDA saying you need unique exactly. identifiers, but you can actually do something with it. And, There's good reasons so, to do it anyway. Exactly. And, and what's this thing like making all this movement behind <laughs> us? What, what is this? So if we look back here, this is actually an application of a lot of our technologies that are, that are brought together. This is showing a, a pick and place application, so it's showing a lot of our vision technology, also showing our robotics. Now, these same technologies can be used in a lot of different ways as far as assembly, uh, packaging, and it takes a lot of that traceability, so you can take all that data that you have about the pieces and parts and maintain that as it goes through these processes, and then also the ability to create a variety of different products or mixes of products, which is another demand that's out there today. So is that like this is even like up the traceability even more in the, the monitoring of the process? Yeah, so so everything we do as you step through the experience is it's tracked. So as someone goes to the laser marker and they can get a, a little personalized giveaway that shows how we can mark products. This shows how as it goes through and it gets a different selection of products, it'll track to see which of those were distributed. And then all the way to, the, um, to our new collaborative robot, it shows how you can then work with a robot without any safety around and be able to, uh, to work collaboratively with that and to, uh, to do a pick and place there too. So why should this matter for medical device manufacturers? So the first thing you mentioned is the UDI side. So basically the, the whole traceability, I mean, it's something that everyone has to do, but you want to do it in a way that's not going to slow down your production. And it's also, you want to do it in a way where the, the, the solution integrates well together. So it's not, it's basically you want to make your medical devices and you want to be good at that. You don't want to have to be spending all your engineering time trying to figure out how to do the traceability side. So, and, and as I said before, is it's not just because it's mandated, but it's also just good practice because you can improve your process processes along the way if you know more about what happens at each step. You know, as machine learning comes more into play and you know, artificial intelligence, I mean, who knows what kind of you know, insights could be gleaned from all that data as well. Exactly, because all of, all of the, when you talk about AI, when you talk about machine learning, basically that depends on having a lot of relevant data. So if we look at through every step of the process, being able to collect that data and then being able to use that as an input, then you can use things like AI to be able to do advanced troubleshooting or they can predict when your machine's going to break down before it actually does, or even before you're going to have a quality problem, we can identify that. And that's where it really starts to get powerful and useful. Right, making it really improving the quality for an industry where quality is essential. Because exactly. People's lives are at stake. Exactly. That sounds great. Well, thanks a lot. Thank you very much. Well, I'm here with uh, Bernie Caperline at uh, Freud and Bird Medical, and we're here today to talk about the uh, the composer line of, of catheter shafts at at Freud and Bird. And I, I I remember like we were talking, you you kind of said this was kind of taking the shaft out of the equation when it came to uh, to catheter innovation. I mean, like ex explain that a little more for me. Yeah, so taking the, the the handle out of the equation. So one of the things that we've uh, done is we've gone through a lot of these type of uh, uh, delivery system development projects and um, the, the handle was always a, a large part of the, uh, the, the, the challenge to the, uh, the overall delivery system. So we worked on our own platform, modular design, can accommodate in multiple different modalities uh, with, with just adding or, or swapping out different pieces so that we can work with our customers and focus on the shaft uh, performance and getting that uh, figured out just right. 
there are going to be a lot of like FDA approved products that are coming out this year that, that use the, the composer handles. Yeah, we're looking at a uh, couple of uh, FDA uh, releases this year with our customers, so we're very excited for them and very excited for uh, some of our uh, uh, solutions to, uh, to make it out in the market this year, so, yeah, so stay tuned. Little, yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, tell me a little bit more about the composer line. Yep, so the uh, the Composer uh, handle platform is a is a kind of a family platform now that is really intended to support catheters and delivery systems for electrophysiology, structural heart, vascular applications, endo uh, applications, uh, and that sort of thing um, in a uh, very modular format. So we can add a uh, control knob to add another modality. We can swap out the, uh, the hemostasis valve or an electrical connector on the back. Um, all in a, you know, essentially a commercialization-ready yeah. handle. Yeah. So that, like I said, we can focus on the uh, shaft development, and getting that just right. Because that's usually yeah. some of the most challenging parts of the project. It's where a lot of the innovations, you know, right now that they're focusing on. So it's almost like having something plug and play with the handle that at least takes something out of right. it that you don't have yeah. to, like, you know, work on. We like don't have to reinvent the, the handle every single time, and it helps accelerate our, our customers' time uh, to market. With well, their new where device. is catheter innovation going right now? You know, it's it's becoming uh, more diversified. So, I mean, this is one of the nice things about the, the platform is that it can accommodate multiple different applications and modalities. So it's designed to be flexible. I mean, innovation's only continuing to increase in pace. Right. The challenge that we have is is really that gap to commercialization. So, you know, some of our solutions are really directed at uh, helping our customers speed time to market and uh, uh, get through that commercialization gap. So having a base that you can build on, in this case, a handle can, can really right. help. Right. Great, well thanks a lot, Bernie. Yeah, thank you very much.